Hello! On today's video for the Cadillac 472-500, I'm going to talk about putting the distributor in so that you can get the motor to start straight up. Now I have a certain way I'm going to do this, and it's not too far off from how most people do it, but they seem to have a lot of trouble. So the first thing I actually want to talk about is distributors. Now most of you are probably going to run a HEI distributor. And on an HEI distributor, there is a reluctor wheel in the center. And that has an inside wheel with a set of points and an outside wheel with a set of points. Now the reason I bring this up is because when this is point to point on the little reluctor wheel, that's the firing point of the distributor. And that's important to know. Now if you're not running an HEI, you may be running a MSD style distributor. In that case, you have a different reluctor wheel. It's got like a finger sticking out. And basically that squared off finger, you've got a pickup over here. In the center of that pickup, you will see a little straight line of the center core of the pickup. Now, just as the back trailing edge of this little squared off finger goes past that center line, that's the firing point of the distributor. So if you line that up with the back edge of the finger right on the center of that little stripe, you're going to be pretty darn close on timing. Now if you're doing a points type distributor, that's a little harder to do because points fire basically when the point just opens and the field in the coil collapses. Now that's harder to judge. So you may be off a few degrees, but set it as best you can, maybe using a little piece of just paper, which is only a couple thousandths thick, in, in order to try and judge where you're at. You're not setting the dwell. You're just trying to make sure you're at the point where it's just opening. And that'll get you close enough that it'll fire. Now with points, you may be a few degrees or maybe more than a few degrees off. It's, it's a hard one to set. But as long as it's close enough, that the motor can fire, that's your goal. And so those are the three major distributors. Now, on the motor itself, the typical way to find the compression stroke of number one. Now remember, Cadillac number one cylinder is on the passenger side front cylinder. Now, the easiest way to find that for most people is they put their finger or their thumb over the the spark plug hole and they roll the motor until they feel pressure. Now with a motor that you've just put a cam in, a motor that's been sitting a long time, the lifters are probably going to be pumped down. And so what you're going to find when that happens is that you actually wind up with two pressure pulses. You can have a pressure pulse on the exhaust cycle because it's not opening that far. So you wind up with a little pulse and a big pulse and a little pulse and a big pulse. And so sometimes you got to roll it a couple of times and see if you can figure out the difference. And with some cams, it's very tough. Now, if you put a bigger cam in, you'll have an easier time because the extra exhaust duration will minimize that exhaust pulse to the point where you may not even see it. And then you just got the one pulse. Well, on new motors especially, I try and do it a different way. Instead of going by the pressure pulse to find the, the compression stroke of number one cylinder, I watch the intake valve go shut. And see at this point on this motor, I'm going to put the distributor in and lock it down. So I don't have valve covers on it. I, I can get it all set up. I mean the nice thing about a Cadillac is I don't even have to have the intake on to put the distributor in. So on this case, we can rotate this and find where the intake valve goes shut. Now remember, the first valve over here is exhaust valve. You're looking at the second valve back. That's number one intake valve. Now as I roll this, we'll start seeing it go open. And I'm not worried about when it goes open. So as we go shut, and I'll watch it here, it just went shut. Now if you look, my timing mark is down here. But this tells me I'm going on to the compression stroke. Now firing is right at the end of the compression stroke. 
So at this point now, we can bring this mark up and line it up to the timing mark. Now I'm going to go to 12 degrees here, 12 degrees, and I do that for a reason. I prefer to try and start, especially a motor that hasn't been run, with a little bit of extra timing. Now, when you're doing this method, you're probably going to be a couple degrees off one way or another. If you only set it to like four or five and you you lose and you didn't quite get it right, then you don't have enough timing for it to really fire. So I tend to fudge a little more towards the the timing up to get it to fire, to break in a cam. I mean, this one's stock, so we don't have to worry about it. But if you're trying to break in a cam, your goal is to have the distributor in, locked down, it fires straight up. You, you only got to worry about maybe setting the idle speed on the carburetor and, and breaking in the cam. Once you get all that done, you can go back with a timing light and actually set the timing. A couple of degrees isn't going to matter in the first few moments of trying to break in a cam. It's more important that it fires up and you get it running at an RPM so you have oil splash for the camshaft. Um, so anyway, I'm at 12 degrees. Now, you can't just set it for 12 degrees because remember, this goes around twice for one rotation of the camshaft. And so the first time around, this is on number one cylinder. I know that because I watched number one go shut. If I was to rotate it all the way around and come back up, I'd actually be over here on number four. I'd be 180 out. And I don't want that. So I know I'm on number one compression stroke. I'm at the firing point for number one. Now I can take the distributor and actually put it into the motor. Now the gears will engage and you come down here and then you got to decide where you want this pointed at and where you want the rotor pointed at. Now this can be anywhere in, in this area. It doesn't really care where the vacuum can is. I, I had to have one motor where I put it all the way down here by where a power steering pump would normally be because the intake was so big that I didn't have room over here. Now you may have uh, AC in here, you may have intakes that have problems, you've got power steering, so sometimes it's a little tough to find where this vacuum can is going to go. Now in my case, I'm probably going to want it up over here with number one kind of pointing this way. That makes number one about right here. That's where I like it. So uh, one thing I want you to notice is I'm not actually all the way down. But I'm not worried about that quite yet. The first thing I'm going to do is with my can here, I've got a mark here about where I want one. I'm going to set the rotor on and see. Now I, I got way lucky because the rotor is basically pointing at my mark over here that I want for number one cylinder. So I'm sitting in a good spot right now. So the vacuum can is where I want it. The rotor is pointing towards the post now, because it doesn't matter which one you use, you can use any of these as number one. You just pick a post that you want to be number one and follow the firing order around. So in this case, I'm going to be you know, right here on the, the cap and start following around. That always helps me make sure I know where number one is. If you want to be on the other side, that's fine, but that would just be clocked over. Just make sure you make a mark. Or where you want to be. So anyway, I'm sitting where I want, but I'm still up. Now the reason I'm up is because the oil pump drive has a little slot in the in the drug, and the distributor has a little key at the bottom to drive it. And this actually has to engage in order to drive the oil pump. So you need to make sure you're there. Initially, you're sitting up on top of it, and it's not until you actually get the slots lined up that the oil pump drive rod is properly engaged. So what I'm going to do in order to engage this last little bit is to slightly rotate the motor. Now this is part of the reason I like having a bolt in the front of the motor. And this one I did with a, a lockdown nut so I can go forward and backwards and it's easier to get onto the little drive bolt in order to rotate the motor. 
Now I am going to move, wind up moving my timing, but we'll come back to that. I'm going to slightly hold down. Now I'm not putting a bunch of pressure down. You don't want to be up here, but remember this is turning. So I'm holding it down here and I'm just applying light pressure. This just ensures that it doesn't jump up and that it'll slowly rotate. If you push down hard, you may actually rotate this oil pump drive and then you're fighting to get the slot to drop in. So I just lightly hold on here and I rotate the motor. Now, as I go, we should find a point, and I may be far off. Oh, see, it just dropped out. I'm all the way flush now. Now, the timing marker is coming back around to the timing, but you don't want that. Remember, if this timing mark, this has been all the way around. If this timing mark was to now line up here, you'd be on number four over here. You wouldn't be on number one. So I'm going to back up and realign my timing one. So I'm going to come back around here. Now I'm lightly holding this down because I don't want the distributor to jump up while going backwards. And I'm going to come back up here. Okay, I am back on my timing mark for number for 12 degrees. My distributor is down. My rotor is kind of pointing at number one. We're actually probably going to be about right in there somewhere. Now the next thing is to actually make it fire at the firing point. And so if you take the rotor off and you look in here, you should be able to line up point to point. Now I am just ever so slightly off. So I'm going to spin this and that's just point to point. Now that makes it the firing point. At that point I can put the lock down on the distributor Put the nut on it, tighten it up, lock the distributor in place. So I've got timing mark properly lined up for compression stroke of number one. I've got the distributor all the way down, and I know I've engaged the oil pump properly. Now you want to make sure that you kind of feel that. I like having it when it's up that little bit, you have to rotate it. If it just drops in, I always worry that this could be off. Most of these are pretty snug and they don't misalign. But I have had a couple that are kind of sloppy in here. And if you just kind of force the distributor in there, you could wind up with it on the outside. And that's a bad thing. So you want to kind of make sure that that little extra drop really makes sure that you can feel that you're engaged on properly on the oil pump drop. Now with this all locked down, I can then take my cap and put my cap on and start wiring my wires. Now, if I should find that whatever set of wires I have aren't properly lining up to where I want to be, or that in this case, if you look, the distributor is too far over, I'll never get an intake on that. I'm going to have to bring this whole thing back over. Then you have to start back over. So in this case, though I'm locked down, I can take that back off and I have to lift this up until the gear is disengaged from the camshaft. And then I come back just a little bit and I come back down. Okay? And see, I'm sitting back on top of the oil pump. Now I'm going to cheat here because I don't have a cover on it. I'm going to rotate this pump around until this drops down. Oh, maybe not. So we're doing it the hard way. We're going to have to rotate the motor. Oh, there it goes. I can back back up. Back on 12. Okay, I'm back down. The vacuum can is further this way now. So then I have to go back in again. Make sure I'm pointed at my mark for number one, which is about there. See, I had actually rotated the distributor when I wasn't watching. That's one of the mistakes you can make. So it's a good thing I double checked. So I'm pointed at number one. I am point to point. The distributor is over and out of the way of the intake manifold. It's sitting all the way down. I'm back at the point where I can tighten it down. And I am good to go at this point. I'll put a, a bolt, a nut on it. 
and put the rotor and cap on it and start wiring it and I can finish buttoning this up and I can guarantee that the timing is going to be within a couple of degrees of where I want to be to fire it and that way it fires straight up and I've done this a lot of times and if you watch one of my videos with this particular motor after it sat for years and years that's one of the things I did after kind of cleaning things up a bit and it fired straight up I mean the motor hardly even did a revolution and it was roaring to life and that's what you want you don't want to be struggling with the distributor you don't want to be moving it around you don't want to have troubles you know oh, I think it needs a little more timing maybe a little less timing this is set and that's what you want you can now set your idle speed break in your camshaft you know make sure the carburetor is working make sure you have oil pressure you know get everything running and once you're you've got that point done then you can put a timing light on it and make sure your timing is correct and then go for your drop so that's how you get a distributor to go in and fire right away and, and not be 180 out not have timing way off in left field and not having to be fussing with it so that's how i do it i wish you well on all your projects if there's any questions of course put them in the the comments section and i wish you luck on all your projects talk to you later